Uh, I'd like to call this special meeting of the Board of Education to order the next regular Board of Education meeting will be Jan uh, Tuesday, January 28th at 7.30 p.m. in the board meeting room. Um, I am going to defer my board meeting report so we can, um, I mean, I'm sorry, my chairman's report tonight so we can get going. Is there any public comment this evening? You can come right up. We just need your name and address and just as a reminder, there's a three minute time limit on public comment. Thank you. And if you could just spell your name. West Avenue. I'm sorry, 262 West Avenue. And what was your last name? Wigglesworth. Okay. Please miss Wigglesworth. I would just like to speak briefly on the student pedestrian safety concerns. The intersection of Neroton Avenue and Middlesex, Ro Middlesex Road needs to have a digital electronic pedestrian crosswalk that will stop traffic in all four directions, giving students pedestrians the right of way. The same is true with Neroton Avenue and West Avenue. This intersection will only get busier as the construction begins. Um, as a single parent, I'm not able to pick up my daughter um, after school in a timely fashion. She's diagnosed with an anxiety disorder and an attempt to cross such a busy and unsafe intersections will only increase her anxiety. And since I do work later than during high school, uh, it, unless she can secure a ride, she needs to wait on campus until I can pick her up. A sidewalk also needs to be placed on West Avenue from the intersection of Neroton Avenue until approximately Fairfield Avenue. It is very unsafe for student pedestrians to have to cross over West Avenue only to cross back over to the other side. Edgerton Road. A sidewalk is needed from West Elm Street to West Avenue on the west side of the street. Many high school and middle school pedestrians walk this path. In addition, I hope that there will be serious consideration to place speed bumps on this road. Cars seem to use this as a cut through and many are exceeding the 20 miles per hour posted speed limit sign. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment before we start this evening? Okay, uh, Dr. Adley, you are actually not on here for a superintendent report, and it's a special meeting, so I can't change that agenda. Uh, so we will move forward with comments from the RTM Education um, Committee and the Finance and Budget Committee. Good evening. I'm Clara Sartori. I'm the chairman of the RTM Education Committee this year. Um, here are comments and questions on the superintendent's proposed budget for next year. The RTM Education Committee met on Monday, January 6th, to discuss the superintendent's proposed budget as presented on January 4th. Our role is to examine the budget and to bring forward concerns of the community regarding various programs. Darien has been extremely generous to its schools and the results have been outstanding. We think that serious attention to the issues that we raise will result in continued, res in continued support for the district at a reasonable cost to the taxpayer and most importantly, better education for the students. The committee discussed the following comments, recommendations and questions. While there was full agreement on most of the issues some issues elicited rigorous debate and we have noted those areas. Tonight we highlight various themes and examples of the questions that we have raised. Overall, we appreciate the reductions proposed in the budget, but we would like to see more discussion of long-term goals and how the budget can support these goals or make reductions in programs that may have become outdated. We look forward to the results of the strategic plan and offer the following suggestions. Establish measurable goals for student outcomes, such as particular skills that Darien students should have now and in the future. This would be above and beyond state requirements. Consider tying budget increases to student achievement, similar to the graph on page nine of the introductory budget remarks that were made on January 2nd by the superintendent. We'd like to see some comparisons with other data, such as private schools, New England schools, or tri-state schools. We'd like you to analyze the expenditure per student and outcomes and consider what the district will look like in the future five years from now or 10 years from now. In terms of enrollment, we hope you know that Darien demographics are changing. There are more two-parent working families, more variety in housing choices, a slower real estate market, and three more mixed-use developments planned. Here are some questions that we came up with. Is the October 1st enrollment number still a good predictor of the number of sections needed for the following year? Is this the best practice in other school districts? 
note that the reported increase in students at Tokenique that happened in the fall and throughout the Christmas holidays. We wonder what the Darien experience with using budget control funds in RC18 is. How often has the fund been used in the past five years? How many teachers have been initially funded through this account in the past five years? We'd like to know the number of outplaced students in enrollment reports as is done in other communities. We're concerned about the Fitch lease and RCO2 going up by 7% and will it go up this much every year? What's the cost of Malone and McBroom studies and is there a schedule for updates? In terms of benefits and health care, we note that more than $500,000 was realized in savings last spring before the budget was finalized. Can you provide more details of this? Have you considered ways to even out the differences in health care year to year? Um, when will you know what the increase in health care costs is? RC25 says that with a state partnership 2.0 plan, the increase would be 8.5 over current rates. Elsewhere in the budget, the increase is listed as 6.69%. So we wonder how you will, dis how you will come to the conclusion of what, uh, that it will be lower than the stated 34%. We see that teacher, increase, teacher contributions have increased, but wonder how their benefits have changed. We wonder whether retired teachers are included in the plan. In terms of athletics, divergent views were presented as the committee discussed athletics. There was some debate on the implications of the difference between equity and equality. Several members questioned whether the same standards should exist on the fields as in the classroom, since many students spend more time with a coach than in any one classroom. We hope you will consider developing policy that recognizes the need for a nurturing, equitable environment for students while considering the uniqueness of each sport. We wonder whether you'll still plan to do a deep dive into athletics, what is the student-centered goal and measure of student success in athletics? And we'd like to see a spreadsheet which details where the funds go for each sport, what screening and training is done for all volunteers in all capacities in the school, and we wonder what the relationship is with the YMCAs of New Canaan and Darien. In terms of maintenance and capital, we'd like to see specifics on a third-party audit of security, and we wonder how you'll communicate initiatives to parents. In terms of technology, RC15, we've seen recommendations made for technology purchases by current and former administrators, only to find that succeeding administrations have made different recommendations or had different priorities. What control is in place to ensure that big purchases or, purchases or priorities for use are not eliminated each time there is an administrative change? How do you ensure that technology purchases and other initiatives will transcend one initiative to an, one administration to another or what ensures consistency in following a technology plan. Several questions that we pointed out are the ROI on technology, whether Chromebooks are more useful than iPads, whether students really use the Chromebooks, um, which devices are used from, for standardized testing. Do third or fourth graders need individual Chromebooks? What's the replacement schedule? And what are the plans to ensure cyber security? In RC16, we'd like you to explain more about legal expenses. Um, and we would like in RC19 for you to describe the balance between required curriculum content and a teacher's freedom to implement curriculum creatively on, based on the needs of the students in his or her class. Um, we want to know how you measure the impact of the psychologists and the department chairs. We're almost done. Uh, finance, RC20, we see the costs are up a lot in this RC. We note the parent concerns about the bus for students traveling over the turnpike to get to Middlesex and Darien High. Um, we want to know whether the finance office will oversee the student activity accounts for Darien High and Middlesex, as well as the elementary schools. When was the last audit of student activity funds? What number of students participates in each club or activity? What's the schedule for a new bus contract? We'd like to know more about how food service is uh, reflected in the budget and whether the new cafeteria has created the need for more personnel. Um, and in terms of just a, a little bit of um, concern we have. We wonder whether it would be wise to get to know the district a little bit better in RC20 before making uh, such expensive changes. Special Ed, we'd like to know how you arrived at the number for excess cost um, and the cost for, for IE, costs for IEPs for out of district placements are going up while unilateral placements are going down. Do you see this as a trend? Lastly, communication. OpenGov may be one way of ensuring transparency and better communication, but we'd like to see some attention to some very simple methods of improving communication. 
One, consider scheduling one evening for parent-teacher conferences to accommodate working parents. When the school staff give informational presentations at PTOs, record the event so that all parents have access to the presentation. This would better support your goal of educating parents. And please insist that parents return emails. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Any questions or comments for Mrs. Satori? I think everyone received, um, I sent out all the comments, so I think you have them in your emails. Yes? Okay. Um, RTM F and B, I'm not sure. Looks like Mrs. Lane and Mr. Arfanos. Good evening. I'm Beth Lane. I'm Peter Arfanos. And we're the Board of Education Vice Chairs for the RTM Finance and Budget Committee. We would like to thank the board for the opportunity to present our committee's preliminary views. Mrs. Lane, could you just lean a little more into the mic? I see Mr. DeMeo coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Ackman, members of the board, we'd like to thank you uh, for the tireless work that you do on behalf of our schools and our children, your balanced concern for both the well-being of our students and the community at large are evident in your daily dialogue and decision making. Uh, we are grateful for the steady hand to maintain a school system both elite and equitable while delivering value to our taxpayers. It's a great deal of work and time commitment and we do appreciate it. We understand that Dr. Adley as superintendent and Mr. Rudel had been here for fewer than six months prior to embarking on their journey to create the 2020-2021 Board of Education budget. Difficult decisions were made in this short time. Maintaining all existing student programs promised, a new teacher's contract, reductions in staff, and deferral of both prior planned expenses and several requested initiatives. All of this comes with the backdrop of a revised pension formula, a healthcare carrier challenge based on current experience rates, and a significant reduction in excess cost reimbursement qualifying expenses. This last one, we should note, is happening without a corresponding reduction in special ed overall expenses which are provided to an increasing number of special ed and 504 students. The result is a proposed Board of Education budget increase of 3.46%, 14% higher than Board of Finance guidance. Looking at this from the top down, two of the above drivers are not controlled by the administration or the Board of Ed. In addition, not much of the increase in this budget is discretionary. That being said, such increases are not sustainable going forward, especially considering, as discussed during the State of the Town, that the marketplace has shifted more of the tax burden to the households in the lower two quartiles within our community. We do recognize that the capital requests are down from the prior year. However, there appear to be large capital requests on the horizon. So, where do we go from here? At the start of the January 6th F&B meeting, the committee discussed how municipal budgeting differs from the corporate budgeting many on the committee are accustomed to. Instead of budgets based on 10 months of actuals heading into budget deliberations in the corporate world, the Board of Ed and Board of Selectmen are developing a budget with only four months of actuals and significant unknowns, unanticipated students, sections on the tipping point, new IEPs and services, new security initiatives, and other variables not quantifiable so far in advance. We believe that some flexibility is required in our operating budgets. Reflecting a top-down approach and consistent with the Board of Ed and Board of Finance requests, the committee looks forward to ensuing discussions and more information on these areas impacting the budget. The current 8% increase in health care, Building on last year's discussions and in view of the current year's shortfall, the committee requests further detail on the proposed budgeted excess cost reimbursement. To this end, the committee would find helpful a comparative analysis of total expenses submitted, number of students, the 4.5% time deductible, and planned versus actual reimbursement rates. The committee also requests information regarding the identification and tracking of students with respect to excess cost reimbursement. The committee needs to gain a better sense of the impact of the teacher's contract on the budget. To this end, further detail on the staffing categories, for example, teachers and certified staff union, aides, administrators, nurses, and so forth, 
and each category is increase in arriving at the 1.76% increase presented by the superintendent. We request that your analysis include FTEs by category. In addition, further discussion of the increase in the turnover account would be helpful. Continuing, uh, ideally technology purchasing would be smoothed out so we do not have spikes in technology purchases every four to five years. Would it make sense to lease, uh, we would like to ask, would it, uh, rhetorically, would it make sense to lease some equipment over the short term until we can reach a point where we have ro uh, rolling procurement? We'd like to know whether we could, there would be comparing original budgets to, to uh, budget, excuse me, comparing original budget to final uh, spending could shine a spotlight on some other opportunities. The committee would also appreciate additional information regarding software, including date implemented, software version and generation and estimated, the estimated date it would need to be replaced. We'd also be interested in, now, in uh, in an analysis of student activity accounts, identifying dollar amounts for sources, and uses of funds to better understand this area. We would particularly appreciate some more color on the student activity account as it relates to athletics, so as to have a clearer picture of all types of funds flowing through, receipts, fundraising, and other contributions. The committee acknowledges the administration budgeting for potential union contract settlements as a prudent practice. We do believe a discussion with Board of Finance would be worthwhile, as would a mutually agreed accounting policy for unused funds. On a lighter note, we suggest that the entries in the current year and the proposed budget not be to the penny, but rather amounts ending in thousands. An oft-repeated sentiment is things that get measured get managed. We are encouraged by Board of Education requests for trend analyses. That being said, we look forward to both administration and Board of Education member conclusions on those trends, budget, and or program impact. In the past, the committee has received a one-page write-up on each cap capital request approved by the Board of Education, and we urge the administration to continue this practice. Thank you again for this opportunity to present our preliminary thoughts of the proposed superintendent's budget. We're impressed with Dr. Adley's initial budget and the information provided to the board. We look forward to his fresh eyes on our future budgets. In closing, while the committee understands the need for flexibility to absorb unforeseen costs or initiatives, the committee asks the board and administration to look closely at opportunities to reduce this budget. Without question, this will be a challenge, and we look forward to healthy dialogue to arrive at this journey's end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Similarly, um, F&B sent their comments out right before the meeting, and I've sent them to board members. You should have them in your email. Um, with that, we will move on to further discussion on the 2020-2021 proposed budget and follow-up questions. Um, a note to the board, we do try by our meeting on the 27th to signal our interest in ads and cuts so the public has a chance to respond. So good questions this week. Good questions next meeting with some signals so that the public knows how to tailor their comments for the public hearing. Um, keep that in mind as we, as we ask questions going forward. Um, so we'll, we'll run down the same way, budget follow-up questions and then any new questions that follow up. Um, sure. Dr. Adley. Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, your attendance um, mm -hmm. to RTM and uh, F&B and to the parents in the audience. So uh, from your questions that do you have copies for us of this? Mm -hmm. Paper copies? Okay. Um, we can go with it, and then if you can get oh, us okay. out copies, digital copies of this, because we haven't seen this. Um, so the questions that came in, we did uh, try hard given the holiday and some schedules uh, to complete this task, which I think we have for the most part. Uh, so I'll give you a bit of time because to the parents, this is the first time my board has seen the, these responses uh, to the last set of questions. So if we, if you would. I don't, have it we, I don't think we got it. No, we don't. No, That's you just, saying. No, I don't just, have it either. Okay, yeah, we're actually continue. <laughs> we're actually finalizing some questions today, so. Um, so, so we can take them uh, Let me one. just pause. Sure. Because of that, let's, we'll go through them slowly, but as soon sure. as you can get them out to us, because that will serve up if there's follow-ups sure. that we missed tonight for the 27th. Uh, the administrative guidelines for EL ELP, we have discussed those to, to some degree, um, and those numbers have been mentioned. There's no. Uh, low range there. I won't deliberate on these unless you want me to pause. Well, we're going to have to pause and yep. go through them sure. before then. 
um, ELP there, the guidelines we talked about, are there any questions on that? Okay. Um, so uh, the, there was a request for, for the enrollment uh, that is attached under attachment M. We just, M for Mark, uh, we just continued the attachments that we uh, had got to uh, pr uh, prior. So the, the tokenic, um, interestingly, when we looked at the enrollment uh, f from tokenic, in fact, all the, all the schools, it was up 11, um, 11 students overall. And actually, we didn't really see a place to actually uh, reduce staff. In fact, if we or add staff, if we if we did, we would end up actually reducing potentially one staff member at Tokenique. All in all, it's a wee bit of a wash. Uh, in Tokenique, there's from the start of the year, from the, the enrollment, there's not, there's actually two students. Just so a net, a net two. Yeah, a net uh, two students. Um, Actually, most of the, the kids who have come in have come in at the grade level that could accommodate the kids. So, when we look at when we look at the enrollment again, when you look at it, it's attached. You can see that it. Honestly, it's a it's it's a wee bit of a, just a net zero overall. Potentially, you could argue about reducing a teacher with these numbers. So, uh, to some degree, the question that came up in, in our uh, the RTM was: Are these good numbers that sustain? And typically they do. Uh, I don't necessarily mean by dairy and particularly, but overall these enrollments that they, they do fluctuate throughout the year, as you know. Um, but they they tend to serve as well. But anyway, you'll see that I've suggested it's just it's a wash, it's a net zero essentially. So the the conversation previous meetings about kids coming into the token district, the net of it in terms of students leaving is two yes. additional students. Yep. Okay, so can you highlight, I'm going to read the questions because sure. I don't know what y'all are looking at, but can you highlight the iPad usage before the ad cut night? Dr. Adley, I'm going to let you answer. Is February 11th before the ad cut night? That's is that, is that before the ad cut night? I should know that. At the ad cut night is February 11th? Yes. And the presentation is right. the same night. So it's, it's, so I think it's going to be very tight. question that, that it was very tight. It's just going to be very tight to do that for us. It's not that we're being evasive about it, it's just going to be tight to do it for us. But we'll have the opportunity to hear the technology <coughs> presentation and integrate that into this year's budget. Yeah. Cycle. I think the question, the question that will end up before the board is you'll have a presentation on the 11th, your mid-process in a rollout. Does that presentation change your rollout? process understanding or do you need that to continue to roll out and go forward and hopefully given timing um, we'll be able to make that decision did I see a hand Mr. Yeah, Brown? It's, it's quantitatively or qualitative I mean it's qualitatively? qualitatively so how do you measure qualitative well that's use? why we need a wee bit of time to do some of the quantitative <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I looked at my peers to see if, if is it all possible to bring this forward. Or at, at this time, they do not have a way to measure, for example, the number of students that log on to the iPad. So qualitatively, for example, if you were to ask Dr. McGettigan in freshman classes, I won't say all, but most of the students are using their iPen and their Logitech pen. In 10th grade, a little we're seeing a little bit less there, and then as the students progress through the the grade levels. Quantitatively, I can't say 100 out of 100 students, and so nor can she, so that's why it's saying qualitatively. Uh, she hopes they're in the middle, middle of midterms now, so she has some surveys that are prepared and ready to go for teachers and to get a broader understanding of what the usage is. Obviously, this feeds into the technology plan that she has transitioned to into this school year that she'll share out on the 11th. Thank you. Okay, when is World Language coming back to talk about additions to the World Language program? So that was a question that was brought up at our last budget meeting. They just presented this past uh, November. The presentation is linked into that document. Um, so normally you might hear back from um, a particular department sometime in that particular school year. 
Uh, so as of now, they would be planning to come back in the 2020 school year. The two areas of study that um, Christina presented, which is in that presentation, is looking at other possibilities of languages in the middle school program and also a possibility of sign language at the high school. Okay. Any questions there? Okay. Um, can the administration make a recommendation on how we pay for the registration of clubs and councils? Can this be added to the master agenda? Well, the basic answer is yes, it can be. It can be added to the master agenda. At, uh, and I would, I would just suggest that um, uh, call it what you will, a summit or meeting, a special meeting, uh, or a series of them to get our head around some athletic issues, be scheduled thoughtfully. At a wee bit of time and distance away from this budget, I think these sort of issues come up with athletics, so I think they should be rolled into that discussion, uh, as well as uh, the concept of revenues and so on. So I, I did not take the liberty of just scheduling that because I think everybody needs to be at the table and ensure that we are all at the table in a thoughtful way. That can be done this spring, it can be done in the summer, it can be done very early in the fall, but that would so, be the latest. So we, we've done this before to varying results and then we've scheduled it before and it's kind of been my opinion and please weigh in here so it's always kind of been on the board to come up with the questions to be asked I think what I would ask if we do this and if we do it I would um, hope to do it before the fall fall seems late um, that the administration come forward with a review of their program and recommendations and then from there the board can generate questions because the last time we did this it was a four and a half hour meeting of questions of which there were varying opinions. The administration um, fell back, maybe justifiably so on tradition, but it didn't give the board much to work with. So if the administration could come forward with recommendations, the board can come forward. Hopefully, last time I asked three times, I only think I received questions from Mr. Maroney. Um, if the board could bring their questions earlier, that would help the administration and we can kind of get some traction on this. So hopefully next budget season, we are not revisiting the same questions over and over again. Mrs. McCammon. I have two comments. One is that um, particular question. Part of what was asked was beyond just clubs and councils, but non-athletic extracurriculars. So I just want to make sure that we are as broad in scope, because um, I, I don't know that 308 is considered, for example, a club or council. That, that's um, kind of what I am saying. I think. I just want to make sure that, that we yep. capture it for historical purposes, yes, okay. that, yep. it's, that it's broad enough. Um, the second is my suggestion would be that rather than agree to appro an approach now, we put a an item on the agenda in early spring just to have the board have a discussion about how to get this structured um, so that would be great last time there were three all calls for that so I would just ask that the board send it in I am more than happy and ready and willing to do this but three all calls I'm gonna give mr. Maroney a pat on the back he was the answer I so if we a, can do that that a would bit be great. of a difference between sending in questions which are sort of just different points of information you might want to know and discussing an overall approach to breaking down the topic so yeah. I think questions are part of that but I would just suggest we <coughs> we talk Excuse as a board me. about um, the the approach that we want to take to the process great thank you um, we'll move forward to uh, the description of the breakdown of the cost of a bus so I won't read it to you, but basically it's close to $500 uh, a day. And for the, for the bus that uh, some of our parents have been concerned about, that would be uh, closer to $90,000. $90, if you did do uh, the one and a half mile radius, which is sort of, like I'm saying that, but that's kind of arbitrary as well to some degree, unless you have a rationale for it. Um, that would require, I think, about six buses. Um, so we're, we're over. We're well, we're well over half a million dollars there now. Um, so that's that's a dilemma we have. Uh, just as way of update, uh, the police are working uh, to review the routes uh, and also review some specific spots that may have been, hit, been mentioned this evening by the public. Um, so that takes them three to four weeks to complete that. And I know they're working uh, also with the local traffic authority. Um, and they'll be look, looking at the routes uh, with ourselves also to make sure that there's no other areas that would potentially be, co be called unsafe or hazardous. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, in the meantime, I've been sharing with parents um, that if they want to go through the process of the appeal, they can certainly do that. I continue to meet with certain groups of parents, but that's kind of where we are at home. So just as a follow-up to the board, um, at OPC I brought this up because while I'm happy, and I think the whole board is happy to hear all public comments, we don't control sidewalks or traffic signals or crossing guards. It's just 
it's not that we don't have an opinion on it we just don't have authority over that um, and I will say from the initial discussion the other town bodies seemed very open to continuing that conversation working together everyone agreed that student safety and is the is the priority so hopefully we'll move there but if there are concerns about a specific crossing or a sidewalk mrs. Stevenson offered there's a way to um, alert public works on a queue immediately of that problem parents can do that they said they would hear they would be responsive to it so I just want to give parents those avenues because coming to the Board of Ed about a sidewalk issue might not be the fastest way to alleviate and certainly we all want to work together um, but in terms of road conditions the town is the place to start and public works is a great place to go um, so not putting you off but giving you multiple options because we just don't have authority over the roadways I saw multiple hands mrs. Ritchie just a question. on the uh, $500 per day mm -hmm. are all the buses doing multiple routes in other words they're picking up the secondary level then they're all doing runs for elementary and the same in the afternoon yeah they're good the, the, they're sorry Go ahead, you go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. You so, go. correct, if you were to add a bus, though, it uh, wouldn't follow the tier system. So if you were to add a bus in this location, it would pick up the kids for the secondary level at the high school, and then it wouldn't go out again until, um, like, the drop-off time. But everybody everybody now currently drops off secondary and then goes, does their So all the buses course. currently on our routes are, are doing all those. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Sure. I, again, I'm sorry if this is obvious. I just saw this. But for... Per day, a day is morning and afternoon runs? Yes. It is, okay. So if we wanted the bus to go somewhere for some reason at like 11 in the, in the morning or two, 1 in the afternoon just because it's our bus to use? Okay. Or is that in the rental agreement what the actual specified usage times are? So the, the 492 a day roughly is the cost of a tier one bus. So it's the cost of your drop off during the day for the start of school and then the after school. If you have a, let's say a, a bus run for like athletics or for music, that's a separate cost. All right, so when we say day, the day means school a certain day. drop off window and a certain pickup window. It's not for the, for the, for the entire day. day right. Okay, thank you. Any other hands? Mr. Browning. So my question is on days do we have to do 180 days because my question would be at the high school level is I would think anecdotally anecdotally is that the the bus usage spikes more when there's off season of sports so when when the fall sports ends there's a big influx of students taking the bus until fall winter sports begin and same until spring so could we do some type of time period to put people on buses because other other than that the buses are less empty and maybe we or maybe we need to do a little study of how crowded the buses are during those time periods but it's just a thought as well as um, I really think and I don't know if we voted on this yet but I really think we should kick this down to the policy committee because I find hazardous to be a very nebulous word and I think we need to kind of define that a little more granular of what hazardous is Any other comments or questions? Mrs. McCammon. A couple of things. Um, number one, I'm not exactly, but in theory, I agree with what Dennis is saying. But basically, I think this needs to come to the board table, and then we need to go from there. Um, I think there were a couple of things from OBC, like uh, perhaps we asked the selectmen to do a walkability study, and that that would be an input to our process. And I think we need to formally have a conversation about that and do that as a board, if that's of interest. Um, beyond that, I looked through the budget packet for tomorrow, and um, it's my understanding that you have been doing some work to redress some of the concerns around safety. Mm -hmm. And um, what I just want us to be thinking about, and I mentioned this before, is if we already know that there are some budgetary implications, we know that there are some routes that we've just worked with the police and have decided don't meet our current policy as it stands. Um, I think we have enough time to by February 11th to make sure that we've um, accounted for that. I recognize there can be fluctuations in enrollment, but I don't know how much by surprise we need to be caught. If we know there's a, a route where we need to have a bus, uh, let's, you know, let's plan for that budgetarily now. Are all routes currently accounted for? Yes. So if I had a, if I had a route right now that I believed very respectfully, right, that I believe is hazardous, I would bring it to the table now. Okay. So the transfer in that we're doing tomorrow, we'll talk about tomorrow then. Yeah. 
So um, I struggle with this one both because I hear the concern of coming forward with budgetary dollars and I see the board slightly handcuffed just with lack of information to really make a good decision and whether that's defining hazardous, which I would say currently the local traffic authority is in charge of defining, or um, 1.5 versus 1.25 versus 1.75. Um, so, you know, you could even open up the whole line and you can throw in an extra million dollars or what you could do is kind of wait for the information to roll down. And so I think part of it is uh, we need a, a significant amount of information to be able to even put this to the policy committee because I'm not sure what the policy committee could do. So I would certainly encourage parents who feel that there is any immediate hazard to their child to please reach out to Dr. Adley because nobody wants that to happen. In the meantime, we will continue to collect the information and have those inputs. Um, short of that, I don't know if anyone feels differently, I'm not sure that the policy committee has enough information nor the board has enough information yet to really be able to make an informed decision. Um, but we'll continue to study and get that information as quickly as we can. Are we about three, <coughs> two to three weeks away from hearing some input from the local traffic authority police? So it, it was a week ago, three to four weeks, so. Okay, so like deduction. Two to three. Okay. So. Yeah. So I mean, so I think I think one, the board. I've seen no hesitancy to act or to at least study the issue and come out with a decision as soon as it has information. But short of having information, we just kind of be operating off of, you know, emotion. So, and it seems as if Mr. Rudolph is very good with questions and information on buses. So, if anyone has it, I would encourage you to ask the administration. Um, I've seen lots of numbers around of how many kids are buses or how many are not. It gets very confusing um, if we don't go to the horse's mouth for that. So, Dr. Adley, get ready to receive some emails, I'm sure. <laughs> Mr. Deneen. So, is the, the police department and the police commission or traffic, they are doing the study and the walkabout? Part of us will be in consultation with ourselves. Okay. But yes. In the interest of everything that I've heard from parents and the emails that I've seen and knowing what we just completed for Ox Ridge, does it make sense to also think about an outside traffic study being done? That's I think in the interest of fairness to everyone and getting it done right, it's just something I think that should be put on the table. I'm not quite sure who would do that, um, but I would... I, I, for me, it's typical to lean on the organizations that you've just mentioned in town uh, to provide that for us in consultation also with the bus company. What, a, what area you specifically want a traffic study? I've been involved with a few of them in my past life. No, I know, but in terms of everything that we're talking about. No, I'm saying I mean, what I area? Just don't, I don't know enough about the police department and the traffic council, you know, time and energy versus seeing what they come up with, having it done by an outside consultant with respect to road safety, oh. a view on our policy. I mean, they have information from all the other districts about two miles, one mile, one and a half mile. They can also understand what's coming into play in terms of developments in town. So I, I would suggest this. Let's get some information back. Once we have there, we can actually kind of develop an action plan, which is what I think the, what the board needs and the community is looking for. It's unfortunate timing that this is when it's, it's being raised, but we will work as quickly as we can to do as much as we can and move forward. Um, sorry? Access costs. Uh, yeah, I know my eyes are getting so bad. <laughs> can you give us an analysis of excess costs for the past three years and this year? Who's actually doing this, Stacey? Yeah, or or Richard? Richard? So uh, I want you to see the hard copy and you can see Currently, where we are, uh, our, our per pupil is uh, just close to 99,000. Eligible, eligible reimbursement, which is uh, beyond the 99,000, is 3.64 million, with the reimbursement amount at uh, 2.68, which reflects 73.5%. And you can see uh, that right hand column, uh, second from the right, uh, used to be a transportation grant, but uh, as with most things in the state, that went away. And you can see at one point, 
I don't know if I believe that number, to be honest with you, that one point nine hundred percent I um, I just don't recall. It was the first year they devised yeah, the algorithm. I just, I just <laughs> <didn't>. <laughs> yeah, they it's mm. been a long time since we've seen that number. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, this is this is you know what the what the board has or at least what the question I believe. Okay, yeah, once we have the hard copy. Mrs. McCammon. I can't see if you've perhaps answered it further down. I'd asked for a couple of areas of, of more information around special education, but one of them, and so perhaps it's further down, is um, just an understanding, it was mentioned here tonight, just an understanding of, um, so we can see the actual ups and downs uh, budgetarily, how um, our reimbursement number is down, but our actual um, expenses are not. So why the departure of those? students what's filling that in so you perhaps have answered it lower down I just can't see so I want to make sure I throw it out there um, I think almost that column added to that spreadsheet would help in terms of number of students mm -hmm. so I'm sorry can you clarify the question well so the, the simplest thing to say is if your reimbursement is down then your cost should be down and that's not yeah, the case no. mm -hmm. right so I think that yeah that would be a misunderstanding yeah. of yeah, right. More students aren't meeting so, that threshold. So would, would you like our just best take at that, like our best analysis? Or? Yeah, because because if you have it, I mean, presumably it's a, it's a difference in enrollment. Your yes. enrollment's up, and that's what's driving it. But I, I just want to make sure that we're clear about that, right? Because once if you have a departure of nine students, um, you know, you're, you've got other students coming in, and that's what's making up the difference. So, yes, I'm sorry, can I, I just want to press what when you say your right. enrollment is up. When you say your enrollment is up, uh, your sorry, your number of identified students is up who are enrolled yes. in the district. Yeah, I thought it was eighty-four students. So yeah. I just, uh, Shirley, go ahead. And I think we did. Um, good evening. I think we did speak to this last time, Jill, and we certainly can do a narrative to explain it. Mm -hmm. uh, the number of students doesn't necessarily equal the cost. Right. Um, you can have less students with greater costs right. based on program, and there are also changes throughout the year. So mm -hmm. it can be the actual expenses, whether it's um, students who are in attendance in the district mm -hmm. or out of the district. Mm -hmm. So the number of students would not quite um, equal the number of costs, and it would vary. So a decrease of six students may not show a decrease in expenditures, um, and sometimes an increase of students may not show an increase in expenditures. When they're below the threshold, but once everybody's yes. at the threshold, then they're operating at a similar rate, right? Depending on the program cost. Right. The, the delta between the what delta. the cost is and the reimbursement. So if we could but just we can write a narrative that explains that, yeah. certainly. It would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, can you give us the number of 504 students over the course of the past three years? So uh, today we, we, we did pull those numbers. Um, I just would like to review them one more time because uh, just different categories of 504, I wanted to make sure that, uh, or Shirley wants to make sure that we have categorized those correctly. I think we're close to 400 kids. Uh, 391, but we do want to just confirm that. Can you give us an up? I'm sorry. Any questions on that? Can you give us an update on men, uh, updates on mental health update mm -hmm. specifically psychologists? I think it's was Dennis's question. Just to do an update, perhaps it was Dennis's question, or Mr. Burke as well, um, to do an update on social emotional learning and include psychologists, work of psychologists. So uh, stay tuned. That that's the to still a care. So, Mrs. McCammon. From a, I agree with that, but from a budgetary perspective, one of the things that I'm hearing um, out offline is people asking um, just specifically budgetarily, not only performance-wise or program-wise, but, um, excuse me, outcome-wise, um, but what is our overall investment in mental health look like and are we tracking that? Uh, because we tend to, we have a lot of, mental health is spread in different places because of how we budgeted psychologists. We have 504, which, could touch on mental health or not. So I think that just in the in the interest of understanding what our investment in mental health looks like and the importance of that, um, it would be helpful to, for us to start thinking about how we would track that, not only in terms of program, but also financially. I think we can do that. Mr. Brown. 
Just as part of that presentation, I would be curious to see how things have changed scheduling-wise. Part of the presentation last year, there was a lot about schedule and time. So uh, some, just some examples of that, say, before I made this request, how people's times were budgeted uh, this year versus last year. Uh, can we get a breakout of fuel costs from transportation? Oh. That's what it is, 155000 <laughs> Uh, any questions around that? Why are the coaches that are in the budget needed? So the couple, of, so the couple of coaches that, that were put in the budget uh, were to accommodate additional, uh, simply presented were to, to accommodate additional students. Some, some, and I think we just have to until we have this discussion. There are going to be inconsistencies here, right? Um, and until we have that discussion, but there are there are teams that are not going to uh, be big enough to even if you want to carry I don't know basketball maybe perhaps right you can't carry thirty kids in a basketball game, um, so the idea of adding the additional coaches there is probably uh, not con congruent with that that thought or wish. Some of the other some of the other programs um, you can, and these are some of the ones that were listed uh, in the budget for these four for additional coaches. Any questions on that? Uh, what was the process that was used to cut the wrestling mat? So all administrators uh, were asked to, uh, to bring forth, uh, once the, I mean, this budget started way over 6%, right? Um, uh, so administrators were asked to bring forth uh, reductions or things that they could defer for a year or otherwise. What came forward uh, uh, from the athletics uh, was the actually deferral of the uniforms and the, uh, the wrestling mat. Thereafter, uh, administratively, I made the decision to, to cut the wrestling mat and the actual uniforms. That's the honest process. Mr. Sini. What's the average life of a wrestling mat? No, 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 no. I mean, they, I mean, is this something that could be thrown in a capital budget? I think a turf is, you know, we, that. Turf I, I typically haven't seen wrestling mats thrown in uh, to, to capital purchases, unless it's labeled sort of small capital purchases. It depends what way dist you know, a district operates. Some districts have small capital, some don't. Um, so it, it just depends. It, could be, it would definitely be a small capital purchase if you had that terminology. But it's probably over 10 years. Yes. Well, I think the one we're talking about is 15. I think the other one's like... <laughs> I don't know what the other one is, but it, but it is not, it's not untypical. In fact, it's very typical for, for mats to be taped together. That's not a sign that it's sure. just that yeah. they have to be taped together. Taped together and taped down are two different things. But I, 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 I'm going to, uh, can you do uh, me a favor and make sure that both of our wrestling mats conform to current regulations? I've already checked on that. Okay. At least all three my athletic director, I guess. Mrs. McCammon. Um, I think ultimately, I, I think we're talking about wrestling mats, but really most of us don't care about wrestling mats beyond caring about the kids on them. But what we do care about, I think, is equity in sports and making sure that everybody's taken care of. So I'd say from a cultural perspective, whatever you decide to do with the wrestling mat, so be it. But there is definitely an ask that, that we ke always keep in mind that, that we care about all of our kids and that sports be equitable. And so I, I'm not speaking so much to the, to the mat, but to, to a more general, no criticism embedded in that decision. Just a more general comment. And I think I've, yeah, I think I've, uh, I hear that loud and clear, both from my board and from my community members uh, since I got here. Um, and that's something that, uh, hopefully, working together, we can we can come to a, a happy understanding of what that looks like. Thank you. Can we receive a comparison by position of Derg A's business offices? I'll, I'll let Rich talk to that one there. He showed it. I'm not sure we're going to be able to see that. No. Do yeah. much yeah. with this right. at the moment. Um, does anyone have any initial questions looking at this? What's your main yeah. point yeah. here, Richard? Richie, would, would you note the main point? We're, we're lean. lean. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd also ask for the total budget dollar amounts. I know it in FTEs. Okay. 
more questions to come. Uh, do we recondition uniforms and are we sure that they are okay? So, so yes we do uh, and we, we sort of ship them out to a company who uh, repairs, cleans, inventories, boxes, uh, restores them, brings them back to us. So. so I think this probably also goes to equity. That is really the board's question. There, are, so, there are some we don't obviously that are noted there. Yes, they are. Any board questions? Nope. Okay. Uh, thank you. If you could get those out to us as soon as possible, that would yep, be great. Yeah, nice. um, yep. New board questions on the budget. Mrs. McCammon. Uh, Shirley, we had talked a little bit last time about um, breaking down special education again, not, not with an idea towards um, ad cut, but more towards an understanding of not only for excess costs, but what's driving the special education budget. Um, did any work get done on that? Um, just understanding the major drivers, are we, what does investment look like? What, how does housing enrollment impacting it? How is any differentiation, not differentiation, wrong word, how is um, within enrollment, are there, um, are we, are we delivering more service around any particular area? We talked a little bit about expanding the DLC program. Um, did we, just looking sort of financially at the drivers of the special education budget. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> uh, I think I'll hold it just for I'll switch mics. Is that okay? Uh, we haven't broken it down. We certainly can do that. I think the budget um, requests really speak to that when we look yeah. at, at the um, narratives we have in the current budget, right. whether it's contracted speech, whether it's um, s related services in any right. of the different domains, OTPT. Um, also, our expansion of program based on enrollment, we did speak to the increase of DLC programs in our elementary level. Mm -hmm. um, I think the narratives in the RC24 does speak to that. If you want us to go beyond that, um, we certainly can look at it. But I think the costs really are about program, about related services, about contracted services, and any of our out-of-district services. But it, we certainly can do it more in a narrative. But I think the RC24 budget book does speak to all of those areas in our narratives. It does. Um, I think what I would value as a board member is um, it's, it's a diffuse way of, of looking at it. And I think that when we talk about our programming and we're out in the community and we talk about the fact, look, at the end of the day, we are making a significant investment in um, reading instruction sure. because we see that this is a need. We're yeah. making a significant, in, and this is what it looks like. And mm -hmm. part of that investment is actual instruction and part of that investment is additional professional development. Um, this is what it looks like financially. We're making um, investment in, in instructing students with um, autism and or autism, a, a autism spectrum. Um, and there, this is what it looks like, again, from an investment perspective, from a programmatic perspective. This is how, what the enrollment numbers look like. Just so that we have an understanding when we're out and talking and we can say, this is what we're doing. We're doing this on purpose and this is how it works. So perhaps we could do, that's a great example. If I look at our line for PD yeah. and our request for it, we actually break that down in the narrative this year, which we haven't done before, showing NEC as an example of that, New England right. Center for Children, showing our Wilson programs. If you want more elaboration of how that is delivered to students, um, I certainly could provide that to the superintendent and we can share that with the board. Okay. Would that be a way to really um, kind of expand on what, how that really provides services for students? Yeah, I think I'm looking for you to cut the data a different way. So, you know, take your data and cut a little bit by program. And I, I understand that, um, you know, we have plenty of kids who are just very individual and wouldn't fit. And so we're going to serve a certain number of kids just because that's who they are. But we have other kids that we can describe in bigger, bigger ways and we can talk about what we're doing as a district. So I think maybe if you want to give information to the superintendent, because that's really the special education report, and if it needs to be done differently and if we need to message around that in the community in a particular budget area that's one thing but I think the board is going to have to decide on how they want to see that data um, because the board's going to have to message around it probably best served last December but like maybe 
you all can get a rough cut together of what you think the board needs to go to message to support this budget. And then as a board, we can agree on what that data might look like. It might just be that there's a financial aspect to that report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do that. Any other board questions? Mr. Moroni. I have a question on, I sent it in this morning, maybe a little late, but I had a question on legal. And can we see the breakdown of our legal costs specifically, um, which broken out into what is FOIA, what is normal business work, and what is negotiated contracts? Thinking that the teacher's contract is our biggest contract, that should take up a large portion, and maybe the next two years our legal bills should drop. But I have no one, that's just one person's opinion. But if we can see that broken out, it would be interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Mar nothing against the data breakout. I guess my question would only be, we negotiate contracts almost every year. Some are more protracted. I imagine those get more expensive. So sometimes the biggest contract doesn't have the most protracted legal expense. But the breakdown, if you all can get, some care. get out easily, maybe Shipman can do that. Yeah. Um, how, uh, Mar uh, March, sorry. Um, uh, uh, it, I don't know, are those the oh. only categories you want? I'm sorry, I was just trying to follow Mr. Brown. I'm so sorry. <laughs> are those the only categories, or should we ask them for a breakdown? Maybe they have greater categories or categories. Well, I'm just kind of asking Dennis to follow uh, up. It's fine to see more. I just yeah. asking for so those three. Just, 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 just trying to interpret what people are asking here for maybe a couple of major categories that they fall under. Yeah. Special education, that's or that, or whatever. Yeah, I don't know if it's three categories. Three eight categories. Okay, so let's be clear which accounts you're looking at. Because uh, there, there's more two looking different RC 16 the administration. Yes. Okay, not all right. so much yeah. special education. All right, okay. yeah. but all right. If yes. others want to see others, I'm okay with that. But to me, I'm, th I'm more in thinking of negotiating contracts and do we see fluctuations? Because I'm looking over the last, I need to change my glasses, but looking over the last three years, uh, from 16, I see variations of 20, 30,000. Yeah, we took a we took a stab at cutting it last year. <laughs> it didn't work out so well. Um, Mrs. Uh, I'm just going to finish my question, then Mrs. McCammon, I'll come to you. Um, Shirley, contracted speech. I know we're talking about maybe moving that budget some OT. I'm still worried there, so I'm not sure that I have a question about it, other than a signal to the board that that's an area of concern I still have in terms of ads and cuts and or um, advocating. It just seems like we're down a lot. And I think I spoke to it last time also. We share that concern because it's not, it was hard to predict. I had mentioned that five new students moved in that had an intensive need for that. So I share the concern, but I think within reason looking at our cohort of students, looking at students aging out, we don't know students aging in, you know, other than our in-district students. Um, we have a reliability that we are asking for based on the trend we have now up until I know it's only four or five months that we're looking at our actuals. But I think we have some reliability. That said, I don't want to turn around in four months and say, oops, either. But to our best, we, we believe we have a reasonable budget for next year, understanding that there may be some unforeseen um, new expenses. Okay. Um, Mrs. McCammon. I had to add on to the legal question, and I've mentioned this before, but I think as a practice moving forward, one of the categories I'd like us to have is to understand as a board, we manage part of that budget, and I think we should be tracking our own uh, expenditures. But, you know, there, I know uh, managing the contract is a, a portion of that, but the time that we spend in consultation with legal, I think we should be managing as a board. So if we could break that out as well. Um, I have a different point. Other board questions? Uh, Mrs. McCammon. Um, my other request, and I think this is something I, I'm throwing out to the board for discussion. Um, we use the budget control to manage uh, fluctuations in enrollment, and based on the conversations that we've had up to this point, it's our understanding that based on the current enrollment of English language learners, we have sufficient, but they were kind of at the bubble. So I didn't know if we want to add into the narrative for budget control that if we were to go over the threshold and need to hire another ELL teacher that we'd have that flexibility in that account. That's open to board discussion. Any thoughts? Mr. Maroney. For me, I would, I think it would be interesting, but I, I think I need a little more information on the day in a life of the ELL teacher. So, because I don't, I, uh, while I appreciate this document, 
my ignorance is I don't understand how a person can know Hungarian, Spanish, Danish, Twee, Hindi, Dutch, and, and be able to communicate with someone who's just come over. So I, I really would like to understand how, what that entails, how much, you know, and we have, we, we have the breakdown that, it, you know, a newcomer, a new student gets one hour a day um, and so on, but what does a day in a life look like for these teachers and how stressed or not stressed are they? So I think I would like a little more information on that before we decide, but if in fact it does come to that, I'm all in favor of adding it into budget control if we, if we are at the close to, close to the tipping point. Any other thoughts? Um, I would just maybe um, tweak the definition of budget control based as an enrollment control. Um, we've all, we, we've typically used it around personnel. Sometimes it's a paraprofessional, which is not really enrollment control. It's student-based need. Enrollment might not change. So um, I, I haven't really thought of it this way, so I don't want to like put a stake in the in the ground, but. If we needed an, if we needed another professional based on need of student, ELL fits that description broadly for me. So I don't know that it's necessary. It doesn't preclude that. I just maybe over. It could maybe be overly specific. I don't feel strongly one way or the other. I'm kind of talking off the top of my head here. What did, I mean, not to put you on the spot, but what does the administration think? Well, I was going to ask the same question. As to historically, would would that have fallen under um, budget control? Given your general definition of enrollment, I, I think it's, I it's think just, it I think, be eligible, but I, so. I mean, I would, I would defer to. Do you have an increased enrollment in right. ELL? Right. You know? Yeah, I just, we are specific that it could, you know, it could be one section at four different elementary schools. So it, given that level of specificity, I just want us to be on the same page about the use of that account. But I think to the point of that conversation, I hear the need for <coughs> kind of more understanding of what those dollars are used for, and is there an opportunity to almost take a budget control type line and put that into special ed for the need for an additional para or additional services that so that you start to define the budget control is for breaking a section, adding a teacher, um, from a special ed standpoint, if you look at sometimes the swing in your costs and what you need based on students coming in and their need, should we start to think about getting more specific to special ed and categorizing those extra costs that way when they come up and when they're needed? Mrs. Ritchie. I don't, um, possibly, but I don't know that if this is the point in time to add that into the budget, but I think we I should didn't have say to add it into the budget. We yeah. just threw it out there as a conversation. Um, but I think we should have future discussions, and I certainly think it would be appropriate to use budget control. I think for English language learners, should there be a need for another teacher in that area? I, I think budget control really goes to some of the comments you even heard from F and B in the sense that you're making a budget 18 months out, and you're predicting as best you can, and. Um, of late, it seems like people are questioning budget control. Budget control, as far as I can tell in all my years, has been used historically in the same, for the same vein. There's a need for an adult to be supervising children that was not predicted in the budget. So the question is, can you predict that better? Or the question is, when the need presents itself, do you need an account to go to? So I think that um, the theory that I, I think the board has always run by, and there can always be a change in that, is we account for that based on the best information we have, which is really sections. But we use that if a child presents a need and a child needs to be supervised by an adult in order to access their education. So I think that's the going theory, unless anyone has a different riff on that theory. Um, you could get more or less specific on that. I think what I'm hearing is people are, can you predict closer? Um, so I think we try every year, and I think this year we were off by seven students in our total enrollment, pretty good. Um, but we can, we can always try to keep honing that, which is why we brought Malone and McBroom back in. Um, but that's my general understanding of budget control, when children need an adult to help supervise them or access their education. Um, yeah. We could broaden that or narrow it as we as we see fit by a board. Mr. So I was just going to echo you. It, it, I don't think they're questioning budget control as a category. It's can we do a little better at, at forecasting? It's, you know, and it's not only budget control, but it was other couple of line items that the board of finance brought up in terms of the transfers and that sort of thing, which 
I guess you're still looking mm -hmm. into, but I think that's where the focus is. Can we do a little better and not carry so uh, much excess budget, if you will, um, uh, from year to year? Yeah, that one was a little tricky, and I think I, I look forward to the superintendent that we can discuss because it, it, it showed budget controls to zero. Budget control would always post to zero. There'd be a corresponding transfer, which that analysis didn't show. So I think we need to look at it fully, and then I would agree with you, have that conversation. Um, so, any other questions? To, Mrs. McCammon. To that end, can we have just a formal update? What is the plan? What what is happening with the questions that have been submitted by the Board of Finance? What, what problem? So, uh, so uh, Richard has been busily working away at them. Uh, so I think we can, honestly, I think perhaps all but one question that we've, we've sort of already answered that we, we don't have the data for, right? Uh, to, actually, maybe to you, Jill, actually. Um, one of the questions that was asked uh, based on some of the enroll, or, sorry, um, staffing patterns. So, I think we, we generally are finishing them up right now, and uh, we'll decide what's the right forum uh, to. Uh, I do want to share that with the board chair first. That's typically what I would do, um, and then decide how we would uh, share that. So I think also I spoke with Mr. Zagratsky just to let him know that um, they're in the queue, but the board needs to kind of do its work, and there's a normal budgetary process. He was fine with that, and and was fine with. Uh, I had a conversation with him last Thursday. Um, he seemed find that everyone's working away and the questions are in the queue just like FMB's questions are in the queue and the educations are in the queue um, certainly recognizing that the Board of Education needs to do their job um, and those questions kind of take priority so oh, we're um, in a good spot though we're in a good spot. okay I look forward to hearing it um, Mr. Rudel can I ask that we just do a double check on some of the run rates of the staff and make sure everyone's in the right I'm not doubting, but some seem really high, so it could just be that we have older staff there. You um, mean the run rates of the staff? Like if we look at the run rates of the staffing salaries, and I know the contract's affecting some, but just some categories, it could just be the um, longevity of the teacher in the district, yeah. something like that. So sure. just, just to double check. Sometimes we find, I'm sure none from you, sometimes we sure. have found some, some places there where we can make sure. corrections. Any, I have a couple more, so any other? Okay. Um, sorry, we hit that one. That's oh, right. I cannot that stand right now. Um, anything else from the board, Mr. Brown? Just sort of following up to that matrix we had in the last presentation of what the step level and the um, for the students. I mean, excuse me, for the teachers. In the district that was just a snapshot for this year the 2019 2020 is there any way to like roll that forward over say two three five years how that normally progresses i mean we're not going to have everyone at the top you know top step and not always going to be brand new like is there any way to sort of model that or is that um so we did produce uh, what's called the teg a teacher experience grid uh okay. during negotiations uh so we did roll that forward for three years okay i mean theoretically you could roll it forward as many years as you want eventually everybody just goes on the top step depending on how far um but we do have it at least for the next three years okay and that would be just so we understand that's the current staff if everything stayed the same for the next Correct. three years right and no turnover was hit or experienced i, I mean I, I don't know the best way to model it but just on assumptions or historical what we've seen in terms of turnover and how that works just you know, how that would run forward would be interesting to see if we can. Um, anything else? Okay, so the board knows um, again on the 27th to start to signal just so the public has a chance to then comment at the public hearing where their interest levels lie in this budget. 28th, I'm sorry, I keep saying 28th, 28th. Um, and with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mrs. Stein and Mr. Maroney, all in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs>